HRC, 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 Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, church. building opportunity to meet people where they are you know in the faith like this is where that person is and seeing that everybody's at a different place so it's a great environment for that where people at a certain place finding okay how can i help you be the best version of yourself rather than be as i am you know what i mean so it looks like you got a good opportunity man keep working at it and keep finding solutions example. It's, uh, so. Especially when, you know, especially, stop with the title first and foremost, everybody. <laughs> uh, especially going through like the anger lesson and the pride lesson that we're about to go into. It gives you an opportunity to have that insight to be able to then operate on a different level to be an example for others being aware of what's going on, being aware of what's coming against you, being aware of the different states that or the process of how things work to then be able to say, okay, hold on, let me stop that. Let me stop at the vexation. Now I know that vexation. I know that I'm literally talking to myself or I literally can feel how it's trying to escalate. So now I have the chance to stop it. Now I'm aware of it, you know, so then you can actually like in situations, they may see you like, hey, you know, you might take a breath, you know, and then come back to and then they get the experience that like, oh, he didn't give into it. Look at that. You know, so you get to actually be that example. And then eventually they're going to be like, yo, what you got going on? What's going on with you? Where are you getting information from? Where are you getting these things from that's actually helping you grow and get through experiences and circumstances so well, you know? So then you get to actually glorify Allah eventually through your works and people viewing you and watching you. So yeah. I see Allah prospering you. Definitely, Todd, you've been, you came in and this is just my own personal testimony for you you came in you put your hand to the plow you put your feet on the ground and you start running you were making the strives to help the ministry you've been truly for me i would say that you've been truly honest and where you were and the things that you were dealing with and it helps you to be able to grow from it and it helps you to grow from knowing where you are to be able to walk and to grow from that place instead of seeing yourself further ahead and not being able to take accountability or to work on the things that needed to be worked on. So yeah. for me, I, I see why Allah is prospering you with the job and whatever the case is, because you're actually coming and doing the work. So praise to Haya for that. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Oh, man, I <laughs> saw so I him gave him a gift by having him run into his son. I was like, ah, look at that! Right. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what we need, man. Yeah. He know what, right. We know he'll cheer us up, man. He's be gracious. Right. <laughs> so pray the higher for that, man. Like, keep at it, man. Pray the higher for that testimony. You know, it's a blessing. Everybody keep building. Glad to see it. I'm glad to see it. And it gives you encouragement. It ain't nothing like having that encouragement that, hey, okay, I'm doing something right. I'm I'm going in the right direction. And that encouragement actually, if it starts fueling that fire of zealousness. So then you're like, okay, let me do more if this is what's working. <laughs> And you have you have the other side of it too, 
for perspective. We're called unto Yache. So we're getting blessed, whether we want it or not. <laughs> we're getting blessed with things being revealed and such. To know even a fault being revealed in our everyday experiences, it's a blessing. It's something to rejoice in because he wouldn't show it to us if our heart wasn't able to receive it. So take it all like, hey, you show me something else I wasn't doing right. That's because you're you want me to grow. You want me to get over this. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke. So right. those are on my chest and if I love it. Yeah. Uh, thank you. My bad. Oh no, it's all good. Yeah. It's interesting, like when we come into the when we come into this walk, we so we we have this a lot of us have this perspective, like we just coming into the walk and Elohim is just going to, he's just going to work his miracles on us and he's just going to get us to where we need to be. Although we know we're not at the place that we need to be. And then when Elohim shows like, okay, that's not the process. That's not the process that I, that I work by, because if I do a miracle, then you're going to take it for granted. So now he's like, okay, you have to seek your salvation with fear and trembling and I'm going to help you by chastening you and revealing those things that you need to work on so that you can actually show yourself approved unto me by working on the things that I show you. And then when Allah starts showing the things, it's like, this ain't the right, this ain't it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, but this ain't it. You know, and it really just, it really, it really is a testimony against us because we know the scriptures. We know what the scriptures say. But then when it happens to us in real life, we reject it. And we talk about how the Pharisees, how they how they were toward Yache. And how in and, and many people, I've had many conversations with people be like, man, you know, if Yache was here during my time, I would have I wouldn't have did what the Pharisees did. But unfortunately, the Pharisees fell right where many of many of us fall today. They didn't understand. They went according to their own understanding. And they believed what they believed, no matter what a man could tell them, because Yacha came as a man. So it's amazing to see how many of us, even to this day, are falling to the same thing that the Pharisees fell to, but don't have, but can't realize it. You know, and this is a, a a big thing for us because the Pharisees, a lot of them, many of them did repent and and turn turn to to Yache, but for the many that didn't, you can see how it's I I don't believe it because it's not happening the way that I feel it should happen. And that's where it becomes a major stumbling block for us not submitting ourselves unto Elohim, though the words of the book say exactly what they say, we have we have our own perspective of how that is supposed to look in the world. Right. And it becomes a stumbling block for many people. So for us, we have to cleave and hold fast to the word and the law and humble ourselves to the law. And that's what's actually going to allow us to get the beam out of our own eye so that we can get the mote out of our brother's eye. Because if we can see the law clearly, then we can see all things clearly. And that's that's the thing that really helps us. So I know we did the um, the anger lesson last week. Um, we're still getting the the pride lesson together. It's probably not going to be recorded until next chapter. It's a lot of information. And then we have another lesson following that one. It's a lot of information, um, a lot of uh, awareness and really understanding. Um, we're, we're, we're getting, as you see, that we're transitioning and we're going into when spirits start collaborating with one another instead of just the spirit itself 
So we're we're heading into a lot of mental health issues where these different spirits are collaborating. So it's we're 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 actually creating the foundation right now with the spirit of anger lesson, the spirit of pride lesson and everything that we're going into with the envy, the malice, the hatred, the um Casa, you can hop in here at any moment, how we're going through all these different the pride, the the arrogance, the vexation. We're, we're going into so many different things so that it gives us a base for everybody's understanding so that we can build on that understanding so that everybody can start understanding when these spirits get together, this is what's going on. This is this mental health issue. When these spirits are going on, this is this mental health issue so that we can actually start seeing it in, in, the, in reality and Make actually understanding eyes. the spirits. Here's <laughs> your eyes, seeing it for what it is, man. Oh man! Ooh, shout out to child and brother Johnny. There you go. And peace with you, sister Ladana, as well. That's Lawanda, man. Ah, sorry, I apologize, Lawanda. Forgive me. Um, so just to give everybody an update of where we're going so that we can actually understand uh, and, and you can see what we're building towards. Um, it's about to get real, real, um, it's about to get real, real, um, especially for a lot of people's households because we have, it's part of prophecy, how people are going to end up being during the end times. So we have to bring forth the information so that people can actually rebuke it and to come out of it so it's going to be um it's it's really going to be touching on households individuals um relationships um we're going to be going into everything because we have to um even relationships between parents and children because there's so many things that's going on uh, with each of these different mental health illnesses that's caused by these spirits so Y'all are going to enjoy it. It's going to be some good information, but it's it's definitely, um, it's going to get real. You got anything, Brother Costa? Yes, uh, it's, it's comprehensive, if that's the right term. We're touching on a whole lot of stuff. That's good for everybody. It's actually, Hanu said, tough meat. This is actually the milk of the word. This is the stuff that's for our growth. In the Testament, Reuben, it speaks about the seven spirits of is either deceit or error that are with us from our youth. And these lessons are milk to help us see what these spirits are, understand them, and grow by the nurture and milk of the word so that we can become adults in faith, adults in spirit by being temperate. All the things we learned about in the lesson on anger controlling our emotions, being sober-minded, sound-minded, you know, understanding, catching things before they get us, like in the times to come, as Zach Wall relayed, things are about to change more. Spiritual warfare is going to increase, and we need spiritual understanding to be able to fight because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, and we really need to know what's going on else we be taken in what's coming it's interesting you said controlling our emotions it's interesting the the end goal when it comes to emotions to stand out of them all together because faith and emotions are contrary to one another faith is an, an emotion faith is a belief so if we're faithful and we're focused on Yache, can't nothing deter us from the left hand or to the right hand. And the left hand and the right hand is emotions. When we get into our emotions, our emotions actually takes us to the law of the devil. So if emotions were good, then we wouldn't veer over to the law of the devil. So we really have to stay out of our emotions and cleave unto the law of Elohim. Because the law of Elohim is straight 
straightforward. There's no emotions in the law. It's this or that. It's this, it's this, it's this. When you go into that, then you go away from the law, you know? So really cleaving unto the law in faith and not allowing anything else to deter us from the law to get us to go into an emotion where we go away from the law. Because as soon as we give into the vexation, another spirit is going to come in and then take us away from the law where we're going to go and commit some sin. So it's really staying out of emotions and cleaving unto the law. Because when the vexation comes, the vexation where it's trying to get you frustrated, annoyed, or worried, those are all emotions. So if you stay away from those emotions and combat them with the law, then you're getting away from the emotions and you're cleaving unto Allah so that everybody can really understand, you know, if that helps you guys. And the precepts, the precept confirms what Zach was explaining in Ephesians chapter two, verse three. Where it said, um, well, verse two, it said, wherein in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And he's going to relate how this spirit actually works to get us to be disobedient. Mm -hmm. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Let's find it, the word wrath. That's the desire, excitement of the mind. That is violent passion. So it, wrath has its children that work in emotions to get us to be disobedient. and carries us over to the other law. So we're on the right track. Can you drop that in the chat if you don't mind, Casa? Sure. Yeah. Another definition movement or agitation of the soul, impulse, desire, any violent emotion, but especially anger. All right. Get us in our feelings. But I saw you even vengeance. Revenge. That's why they say vengeance is of Alahayam. Like, because if we get into that passion that somebody wronged us and that we need to do something to them, it's taking us away from Alahayim's law, it's taking us unto the law of the enemy. It's, it's... But if you say, Alahayim, vengeance is of you. If we rebuke it with the law, vengeance is of Alahayim. You know, they, they know not what they do. So leave Alahayim to the avenging. And we start focusing back on our own plowing. We stay out of the emotion. And then you can look in the law to see how to help the person in truth. As you speak right. of being out of the emotion. Because yes, you can take it as, um, I'm going to take it in my own hands because they did me wrong. Or the spirits can attack us the other way to say, I'm done with this person because they did me wrong. I ain't having nothing to do with them, having no compassion mm -hmm. on them or not forgiving them, as opposed to, as you were relaying, rebuking the thought with prayer, acknowledging the truth unto Allah and putting it in his hands, and then doing what the law says to do to help the person. Like Crazy, cause anything outside of the law takes you to another law. Like, even when you said, um, I don't want nothing to do with that person. Like, and, you know, I, I'm going to go on my way. Right? You're literally breaking the law. Because it says, judge not that you be not judged. So you're literally breaking the law by doing the thing in your emotion. Like, so it, it it's really, it, it's very black and white. Like, it's really getting very black and white. Like, the law is straight. Like, like when you were saying, that, I'm like, Yache is a rock. A rock doesn't move. 
And then the law, he says, don't go to the right hand or to the left. Don't let anything sway you as water. Right. <laughs> don't be unstable as water, as it said in Reuben. Be steady. And we are. We have a great opportunity. We have a great opportunity. To keep the law without wavering. Mm -hmm. Keeping the law without wavering. Sounds like a lesson topic. <laughs> Hebrews 10 and 22, it says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. I know your lesson name came out, Casa, but I know it, it, it was talking about how pride provokes. Do your thing, man. All right. <laughs> it was talking about how pride provokes. So when you're operating in the law of the enemy, it provokes. The pride of it provokes. Whereas when Elohim's law, it said, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. So by walking in that faith and walking in that love we're provoking one another to love one another too and we're provoking them to do good works too like hey do what's right hold fast to your faith right. don't waver see the provocation onto good after going through the anger lesson and understanding how the envy works as well where we had the admonition to you know pray for the prosperity of another and be glad to see them prosper you can see as paul is exhorting if everybody's focused on doing good and then encouraging each other like hey i see you doing better in that area that's great man keep pushing like that's a great environment for the provocation of love and, right. and prospering because everybody's after it. Like, yeah, let's go. Let's keep going. You see our brother maybe struggling, restore him in meekness. Like, come on, we ain't done. Let's yeah. go. We got to get after it. Right. Take this thing and try. Let's keep riding. Right, you see, that provokes unto love and good works. Because nobody's All beating right. anybody down. And the mindset of, we got to touch on <laughs> getting out of the spirit of pride because pride doesn't like to be corrected pride doesn't like to be in a lower place than someone else because arrogance is a sense of superiority but if everybody's actually humble nobody's seeking to be above another we're all esteeming each other better than ourselves so there's no place for that sorrow of oh i don't I'm not as far as someone else or, oh, I'm still struggling with this and that. It's all, everything's good for Malahayim. Keep keep building. Thank you for showing me what you're showing me. Thank you for the brethren that will help me. that will give me understanding of what I may be struggling with or that will encourage me when they see me working on something or when they see me prospering in something to keep me motivated. Like, it's... It's a cultivating environment. <laughs> right. There's life in it. It's great because, like, once you really accept where you are, you start to gain contentment. And because of that contentment, you're not looking at anyone else with envy because you know the accidents that befall you, you're kind of good knowing that all things coming from Elohim and that Elohim has you right where you're supposed to be at that present moment. So 
instead of looking at another, you're like, yo, I ain't got me where I need to be right now. This is where I need to be for my growth, for my work. And the interesting part is usually when somebody is staunted in their growth, it's because they're met at a, at a place or they're dealing with something that's essential for their building in other areas. So where they might be, may be something that it may be the hardest thing for them to get through. And after they get through that, it might speed up and, and start growing very quickly. So you just never know where you are. That's why we're not supposed to be envious or jealous of our brother. Because we don't know what they're dealing with and what they're battling with and the thing that they have to overcome and what we're battling with and what we have to overcome. Like, you may be struggling with pride. And pride may be trickling itself into different areas of your life where pride is a major thing for you. And Allah has you dealing with that pride in the season. Though it may be hard for you and it may take you longer to come out of it. But when you do come out of it, you see the other things that it's affecting aren't going to be affected anymore where it's going to allow you to then be able to move faster in your growth. So you really have to understand and really focus and trust Allah as to where he has you and trust the process and trust his journey and trust what he's showing you so that you can actually grow from where you are. Not looking at another, seeing where they are and allowing envy to enter into your heart. Interesting, we touched on that. Um, judge not, right? Mm -hmm. Um, hold on, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 it says, Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged, and with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest? thou the moat that is in that brother's eye. So you can see that in the first place, you didn't have the right perspective and the right mindset because you were already struggling. Like, and this is why what we're going and we're talking about pride and this is where we're going next. And it's, it's a major thing for pride to see everything outwardly where you don't, you don't really assess yourself, but everything is the problem. Everything is the justification for why you've done or you decided to do what you decided to do. And you also judge outwardly. You look at everyone else as the problem. So with this mindset, you can actually understand why Yacha himself was actually talking about judge not that you be not judged, and then he's going to go into the different circumstances of what he's actually referring to, right? He says, why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye? So you're looking outwardly. You're looking at your brother, and you're like, yo, you got a moat in your eye. You, right? And he's going he's gonna to go on the phone. I'm going to let him speak. And why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye? But consider if not, but you don't consider it. Now, this is this is where it starts getting very interesting. Consider. It means to observe fully. Behold, consider, discover, or perceive. So, look at that. The definition said to observe fully, not just to observe. Right? So you will turn a blind eye to some of the things you got going on just to see your brother downfall. Though you may be struggling with the same thing yourself. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but consider if not the beam 
that is in thy own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thy own eye? Now, this is where pride makes us become hypocrites. It's pride that actually makes us be hypocrites. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast the moat out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Now, that's interesting because this is a lot of times how it happens. It's because you're in pride and you're judging and you're the judge and you're telling everybody what they got going on, though you don't want to fully consider yourself, they're seeing you. So it says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. What you're saying is good. But you're the problem. <laughs> Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, because what's holy is holy. The law is holy. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. So you have that good information. But yet you're trying to go and look at everyone else. Though they may not be ready to receive what you're saying. Because of that pride. It's, this whole section goes into pride. Because you can't see clearly. Because you have a beam in your own eye. You can't see somebody that's looking to receive a, a good word from you and somebody that's not trying to hear anything that you have to say. And then it says, at least they trample them under their feet. So they're going to trample whatever you're saying under their feet because you can't see clearly either. And turn again and rend you because they're going to turn again and say, hey, I see the same thing in you. I see this in you. So this is why we coming out of that pride and getting that beam at our own eye allows us to be able to walk more clearly and see who's in need and who's not. Just like when we talked in the standard of Yashay lesson about focus on your own plowing. And if you have the opportunity to help your brother, help your brother. Because when you see the opportunity, that's someone who desires to help. I'm not just going to go force myself on them to help them. But that's what pride does. Because I have that beam in my eye. I can't see clearly as to when I'm forcing myself on somebody. Or when somebody's truly desiring something. So you really get to see the dichotomy of the judging in different aspects when it comes to pride. One aspect of the judging is to find a fault in your brother or your sister. One aspect of the judging is trying to correct people when they're not seeking to be corrected. So it's very interesting the way pride plays. You know, we're gonna and that's the lesson that's coming up. I guess I'm amping it up right now. Hmm. So <laughs> going into a lot of things. Pride also does that to as you mentioned, not being willing to look at ourselves. The pride also does that to stay in a sense of superiority yes. by seeing I can see what you're doing so and though it may not be said it's a subconscious 
feeling of feeling better about ourselves by looking at what somebody else gets going on. That's the judging. Be very aware. Right. Because me and Casa had a conversation the other day, and I was telling him, I said, if for a lot of people that judge people or that have that that mindset where I feel better by your downfall or or not having that mercy, that lack of mercy and empathy, it's because they're still in the battle themselves. Because for a person that actually has came out of the battle and actually got the beam out of their own eye, they know how much it took for them to get it out. And they know that there was no way that they could have got it out themselves without Alahayim and the mercy that was upon themselves to be able to come out of it. So they will walk in that mercy and that humility and that gentleness because they know how much it took for them to get out of it. So you can see where people don't have that mercy or don't have that gentleness or don't have that compassion. It's because they're still struggling. And it's just that dry cut. Yeah. The dichotomy straight. Man, if you knew what you had to go through to get through all that, to get through everything that you had going on in your life, man, you'll be full of compassion and mercy. I'm telling you. All right. Pride is wrathful. I'm going to learn about that. So it gets into passions. Hence, not being able to see that a person, it isn't the right time or a person doesn't want the correction. Pride can't see that. Because it's operating out of off of feeling, like might be upset with where the person is, hence wants to say something, or be offended by where the person is and wants to say something. So it's going to be words out of self pleasing, and not actually considering, hey, is this actually best for this person at this time? Is this going to help this person at this time? It's right. It's emotional. It's, I got to get it off my chest because it's yeah. about me. <laughs> yeah. Bubbling. And there's a difference in getting it off my chest as opposed to talking about it for peace sake to understand what it is. It can work. We are talking about that coming out. You got to come out of it first to be able to have compassion on others. Being caught up in the briars. In order to come out of briars, I actually have to be cut myself because it's briars. And if I'm not willing to go through that chastisement, I'm going to stay right there in the briars in my sins. I'd rather stay right. It's interesting. The briars are surrounding me. So my iniquity is engulfing me, right? <laughs> It's I, because of my comfort in it, I've been used to sitting right here. I have a choice of whether am I going to start to move to get out and go through the pains of things being revealed, getting pricked here, getting pricked there. Am I going to keep pressing out until I actually get out of it? Or after a few cuts, I don't like the way that feels. That doesn't make me feel good. I feel like I'm being attacked when this is being brought up. Then I stay right in the briars and I'm not going to get out into the clear path of the walk. Interesting journey. Yeah. You know, for many of us, we don't know we're in the briars and we're not getting cut because we're comfortable and we're not moving. But as soon as we realize that we're surrounded by briars, and we start to go trying to get out, you start getting cut up and you're like, hold up. This isn't, this don't feel good. This can't be the walk. <laughs> like, though you literally allow the briars to grow around you because you didn't fully consider anything. 
So now you have all these briars around you and you're comfortable in those briars because you have pleasure in it. But it, it, as soon as Allah starts revealing those, those briars and those thickets and those thorns, you're like, okay, well, I want to get that away from me. But then you get, you move and it starts cutting you and you're like, hold on. Like, I want to get it away from me, but it hurts. Like, are you going to go through the pain to get away from it? Or are you just going to say, hey, I know it's there. You're going to acknowledge it, but you're not going to take accountability for it. I'm going to acknowledge that the thorns are there, but I'm not going to take accountability to have to get out of it. It's interesting, Zappa. <laughs> The thorns, any man that's stuck in a thorny bush or off in the jungle, you got to have a sword to get out. <laughs> you got to have something to clear up at the temperance of the law. It can, we can try to go out ourselves and everything's going to hurt because it's us ourselves. The pride mm -hmm. is still there <laughs> where we're trying to get out, but to first acknowledge like hey look around me i am in thorns i see my iniquity i need the help he actually comes to help his law is a sharp two-edged sword dividing the thorns clearing the path but it takes humility and trust in him to actually walk through and trust okay this is the safe way to go or are we going to try to find our own way and go right back into taking the bruises on ourselves instead of casting all our cares upon him when, yes, you're leading me out, so a bride is going to touch me. Okay, you show me a fault. I'm going to cast my care upon you and tell you about it. Hey, thank you for showing me this. Can you heal me from this? And keep walking until I'm out of the thorns. So the angel that go before us. Yeah. Well, that takes cleaving. That takes cleaving unto Yache and Alahayim and cleaving unto the law. Yeah. Like if you're not gonna cleave, you're gonna get cut up. And you're going to have to, you know, literally going to be trying to find your way out, your own way out. You're going to trust in your own strength. And eventually you're going to fall back into the thorns because your own strength isn't enough. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. These are spiritual battles and we're carnal men. We need one that's spiritual to be able to fight for us. So that's why we can only come out through Yache. And the way that we show ourselves approved unto him and show that we love him is to keep his law. And then that makes him fight and ward for us. We have to first go through the humbling process of humbling ourselves to his law to show that we are able to humble ourselves unto him. But if we get into our emotions, every twist and turn that something doesn't go in our way through our pride, then we can't humble ourselves to his law. And we're going to be stuck in the thorns and thickets Yeah. It just keeps getting more clear and dry cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Like, don't give you no room to move out to go from the left hand to the right. Yeah. That that thank you in perspective, man. If I'm hollering and crying every time I get cut, it's because I ain't want to get cut. Right. 
I want to see it. I want it to be. But if I know, hey, this is what it is. I'm in briars. I'm going to keep pushing because I'm trying to get the water. I'm trying to get the life. Whatever cut come, thank you. That's just to get past this hurdle right here. On to the next thing. Staying out of the vexation. My vexation is them spirits using that vexation is a, is a tool, man. Yes, it is. It's the it's the middleman. Mm. The vexation is the first. It's the it's the first line of defense. Ain't that what they call it? <laughs> Shut up. It's the first wave of the army. It's like they send the little guy, the little guys, the expendable ones, to go and get you started. So you don't see the big one come after. What been helping me is seeing the other angle of vexation where it's not vexation alone because, oh, I messed up. But there's also a vexation of I actually want what I'm being enticed with. And there's the struggle of not being able to do it, that fight. And coming out of that, like, no, there's nothing to be vexed about. That's just not right. And getting out of emotions. The law is the law. The truth is the truth. There's no feelings to go into about it. To stand on one side. That's been helpful for me. Seeing why the vexation was actually happening. To not have a false perception. Hold on real quick. Hold on. The other definition in the Hebrew for vexation is a feeding upon, that is grasping after. So you can see like it's, it's not just frustration or annoyance or worry. It's actually your lust too. And then that lust creates the frustration because the vexation, you may long after something and it's not right and you know it's not right, but then you go into that frustration of the vexation of, I don't want to give into it. I don't want that. I know it's not right. But at the same time, when you're talking to yourself, you're still giving into the vexation. You're like, I know it's not right. I know it. But you're actually using reverse psychology against yourself. Well, the spirit's using reverse psychology against you. Because it's like, I know it's not right. I know I don't I don't want to give into it. Da, da, da. But you keep talking to yourself, and you're giving in to the vexation. Yep. Thing sitting right so, there. <laughs> instead of cleaving to the law at that time and saying, no, this is what the law said. This is what I'm going to hold on to. This is where I'm going to sit. Like, it, it, the way it plays, it's it's tough. It's a tough spirit. Like, Grasping after that was it. Praise Allah Hayyim for showing that man. That was one that's having the insight. And for everybody, whomever may be listening, the importance of getting insight of what you got going on. If you sit there by yourself, try and overcome it yourself, you're already shot. Because pride doesn't go on to the wise. It's a precept on that. It doesn't like to be corrected and it will not go on to the wise because pride likes to stand off by itself. It's a sense of superiority. There's angles it plays at. What is it at? Hold on. It says in Proverbs 15 and 12, a scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. What pride does, it keeps you from going to get understanding of what you have going on. Because if you do that, that requires vulnerability on your part. Well, I speak for myself. It requires vulnerability, accountability, honesty, and also a willingness to 
not just acknowledge, but ask for help on how to overcome the thing. These are things that require humility to be vulnerable, accountable, honest, seeking help on how to overcome. Pride is not a fan of these things. Because all that comes with change, that's coming out of the briars. So if you really want to overcome whatever you have going on, you got to get counsel. Because we learned in the anger lesson, Allah, I am telling everybody what they have going on. People are having dreams, you're having experiences, conscience weighing on you. You know what's happening, but you have to want to see it and want to come out of it. And seek the counsel. Even in, what is it, Ephesians talks about how he gave gifts unto men for the perfecting of the church, perfecting of the saints. Like, his order is that we need help. We have to seek counsel from people in order to overcome what we're dealing with. And you'll see the growth. As the scriptures show, you'll see it. If you buckle down and get after it and separate yourself from the struggle to understand what the struggle is. Is that far? Like what? Oh, I, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> man, it, it make a difference, man. <laughs> make a difference. And everybody has to go through it. The apostles even went through it. Paul himself, if you read Romans 7, he was there fighting, trying to understand why am I not able to do the thing I want to do? What's hindering me? But if we got to see the next chapter of his growth, even to get to that point, because he got to the place where he actually delighted in the law in his mind to be able to see what was going on within him. That was a step in growth. So you can know you, you may be right now where your pleasure outweighs the law. Your pleasure outweighs the scriptures. You have to work, pray, focus to work righteousness to cast out that hatred for Allah I am. And get to where the law is your delight. Be temperate, slow down, do whatever you have to do to actually focus on the moment to make the law what comes first for you. And then when you get to the place where the law is your delight, you're going to learn more, as we've seen with Paul. You're going to see the things you're trying to do, it didn't happen. So it's levels to it, but it's not something to be discouraged about, to take it as good, knowing, okay, you're showing me more of how this sin is working against me so I can overcome it in all aspects, not just in one. You have to walk that out all the way to come out of the briars. Yes, indeed. You can't trust in yourself. For me personally, I trust Allah I am more than I trust myself. But I know that everything that Allah I am has for me and wants for me is better than I can want for myself. So with that trust, knowing that Allah is not going to do anything to hurt me. He's doing everything to help me. And even with his law, it's to help me. Like I've fell into situations where man would have tore me up or, or really hurt me. But the law of Allah actually saved me. So for me, I trust Allah more than I trust myself. And I think that's a big thing for a lot of people is actually trusting Allah and not giving yourself over to your own imagination or your own heart or, or finding another way that you think is better. Because from my experiences, when I did find other ways that I thought was better, it always backfired on me and it didn't become better. I 
I can't speak for anyone else's experiences, but I can speak for my own. And I know that it was hard because I was resisted. Whereas by keeping the law, I'm not resisted. By receiving what Allah shows me or tells me, I'm not resisting. I'm able to change quickly. I'm able to adapt. I'm able to to see, see myself, see others. And I'm not blinded by my own desires or my own lust to be led astray by them. Because I'm focused on Allah. I'm focused on what he wants me to do. I'm praying. I'm seeking guidance. I'm not going off according to my own accord and doing that, which is right in my own eyes. I'm waiting. I'm patient. And it's helped me grow. It's helped me grow to help others. And it's helped me grow to help myself. So, right. Amazing. May he prosper you and perfect you. Just, just to give you all some insight of my own experience. You know, like, I've been on opposite ends of the spectrum. You know, I've been in a place where I ain't listening to nothing. And then I've been in a place where I'm listening to everything. And trust me, listening to everything is easier. Mm -hmm. but... <laughs> I'm in a place where I see the dichotomy clearly now, understanding the different person I am when I'm in my feelings and knowing clearly it's not just me and my feelings. I'm actually serving the devil, so... And gave me perspective of faith to stay temperate and calm no matter what's going on. Now I have insight of what faith actually is. Right? To know, I, like you said, I think you mentioned earlier about being put in a box. Mm -hmm. The lessons have brought clarity like, all right, ain't no confusion what's going on when this certain thing's happening, when this feeling comes and when I'm getting caught off into any random thought. Well, my mind isn't settled. I know what it is now. So the choice is clear and I'm getting to make better decisions knowing that choice. And if I falter, I know to hurry up and acknowledge it before I go into a worse thing. Because Asha mentioned that oh, the good inclination entertaineth righteousness and if he sin, he quickly repented and cast it forth the sin. So it's sin or just a poison? I'm about to go there because I definitely didn't. I was, I was like, nah, that ain't the worst. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I, I, I thought it said poison because if you don't suck the poison out, it starts spreading to the rest of the body. It talks about devilish poison and gad. He, he said, I say unto you from experience, my children, that, that you drive forth hatred, which is of the devil, and cleave to the love of Allah. I am righteousness, cast out hatred, humility, destroyeth envy. After he had said that um, hatred filleth the heart with evils and devilish poison, but it was Asher. Oh, that was it. Acts chapter 1 verse 6 therefore if the soul take pleasure in the good inclination all its actions are in righteousness and if it sin it straightway repenteth for having its thoughts set upon righteousness casting away wickedness it straightway overcometh the evil and uprooteth the sin and having that was essential to know like even in this growing process, if I make a mistake and I'm sitting there going through the motions of 
trying to find a way out of that mistake or say or to justify whatever transpired or act like it didn't happen wickedness is at work so hurry up call that thing out lest wrath come upon me because i'm gonna get in my feelings about what happened because the conscience bears witness the conscience knows you didn't do what was right if i get into the wrath lying is gonna come and I'm going to commit another sin. So it's a focus. Hurry up. No, that wasn't right. Acknowledge the fault. Call it out. And then focus. Because the day isn't over. Take it as good and keep walking. So, not being deterred. Amen. Good perspective for yourself. Even if someone else comes and trespasses against you, same thing. You got to cast forth the poison and the wrath. We'll just say, uh, that's the guy now you're talking about, Dan. <laughs> this, but you got love ye therefore one another from the heart. And if a man sin against thee, cast forth the poison of hate and speak peaceably to him. And in thy soul, hold not guile. So speak peaceably to him and don't operate in guile and really be upset, but trying to sound like you ain't got no problem. Really let it go. You have to really let it go or else the poison's going to spread throughout your whole body. That's why you can't get into an emotion. You can't give into the vexation. Because if you give into the emotion, then, and you're trying to conceal the emotion, it becomes guile. And then you send. So you really have to not give into the vexation, rebuke the vexation, hold fast to the law, and really speak peaceably to them, although they may have sinned or done something wrong against you. And if he confess and repent, forgive him. But if he deny it, do not get into a passion with him. At least catching the poison from thee, he take the swearing, and thou sin doubly. All right. So if you try to reprove him and he don't receive it, leave it alone. Don't give no place for emotion. But if Thou get into a passion with him and give into your emotions. You're going to sin doubly and he's going to sin again. Because he trespassed against you in the first place, then both of y'all going to be in a passion with one another. Where you didn't cause your brother to fall and you fail to. Right, working on both sides of it. Right. His pride is hateful before Allahayim and man. He's going to work the works of hatred. I just want everybody to get the perspective since you went into the perspective of yourself and dealing with yourself. Also dealing with other people too so that they can understand the full matter. Thank you. Does it, it, it put perspective on myself too because I can be hateful to myself. I'm not having no compassion on myself for a mistake I made. And, and keep on harping on yourself instead of letting it go. Yeah. <laughs> That's all they, yeah. They put perspective. Poison in my own self. <laughs> it's funny to end a battle because you, you see it there. If I'm there arguing with myself like, nah, I really didn't do it or it wasn't this, it wasn't that. Instead of confessing so that Allah could forgive me. You know? right. And then forgiving myself. Like, okay, that happened. All right. Learn that. Let's pay attention to that too. Keep going. That's that sorrow encouraging my own heart. Amen. Oh, 
right way repentive. Speed of repentance is a growth, if you didn't know, family. <laughs> Oof. What else you got, Casa? No, that was good. Okay. I see we uh we're working our way to the pride lesson, obviously. Yeah, good build up. <laughs> healing music, healing music, healing music, healing music. I'm making the choice to change my mind. Change my mind. Seeing I'm working on mine. Seeing everything ain't fine. I'm getting the chance to fix mine. Praise the higher. I'm making the choice to change my mind. Change my mind. Seeing I'm working on mine. Seeing everything ain't fine. I'm getting the chance to fix mine. Gotta change my mindset. All the things I didn't learn. Some hurting, some help. Gotta start with me. See, I look at myself. Examined by the law. Am I seeing this correct? This correct. 